I know what you're thinking. How much longer will he be dragging this out? Well, thankfully this will be the last video, but there is a fair amount to still tell about Dragon Spirit. In this bonus video, I'm going to be showing off four things. Well, not necessarily showing off. Some things I have to more describe than show. But I will show off what I can of the Gold Dragon playthrough, a.k.a. Easy Mode, some of the differences between the North American version and the Japanese Famicom version, and a couple of uh, things related to a sequel to Dragon Spirit, and a very odd uh, place where it would show up many years after the original game. So, uh, without further ado, let's take wing. So, once I stop talking about what happens in the Gold Dragon playthrough, I'm going to show you a little bit of footage of it. The only things I'm really going to show are story mode based and the uh, entirety of Stage 9, because for the most part, everything's the same as far as enemy placement and bosses and such. Now, the only reason I'm showing Stage 9 is because it feels like it's a lot shorter, but it could be because uh, you originally had to go through a very long stage 8 to get to it, and you don't in this ver this uh, mode. In fact, in the Gold mode, you only go through stages 1, 3, 4, 7, and 9. And there are a lot of changes to the way the Gold Dragon operates to make the game much easier. First and foremost, you have twice as much health as you do in Blue Dragon mode. As a Blue Dragon, you can take three hits before you die. In Gold Dragon mode, you can take up to six. The Gold Dragon moves generally faster, making it usually easier to dodge the enemies, though sometimes that can make it slightly easier to blunder into things you don't intend to. It also has a faster rate of fire to begin with. You don't have to get the um, higher um, or firepower power-ups, I should say, in order to get a, a quicker fire rate. So you have an advantage there right away. Uh, two other things that happen with gold mode. Um, in the sections that a maiden would show up, which in this case would be um, areas three and four, uh, they automatically show up with their portrait and the ensuing bonus that would go along with it, no matter what happens. There's no special conditions. Uh, finally is Galda himself. In Gold Dragon mode, you only fight his first form. The second form with the uh, stained glass uh, window behind him and the bouncing balls and the fire doesn't appear at all. So it's very much an abridged game and it has a sillier ending. You'll see that in a moment.
Bubble Wang. <laughs> bubble Wang. It's six feet of Bubble Wang for you, not them. Clam. Power up, Clam. Another power up clam. And that's interesting. So I get trunk and I get uh, dragon uh, options. Well, I will uh, roll with this for a little while. This seems interesting. Um, and I'm pretty sure that's what led to the divorce. Next, regarding the area bosses and the maidens, as far as the area bosses go, if they have official names, I cannot locate them. The source I was really hoping would say something about it uh, would be the NES manual. And while I did happen to find a scan of the manual online, it doesn't even show pictures of them, much less names. So I'm left to assume that they either 
don't have official names or they were never actually revealed. I'm, as usual, happy to be proven wrong about that kind of thing, so if they do have names, by all means, please let me know. Now, the Maidens. I did not realize when I went through the game the first time that there was a difference between whether the Maidens showed up with their full color portrait or whether they showed up in the shadowed portrait. It actually depends on certain factors when you finish their respective levels, and sometimes it's just totally up to RNG luck. The color portraits are bonus givers, and uh, depending on the uh, stage, uh, they will either restore your energy, Area 2, Area 4, and Area 6 will do this, or give you a 1-up and this will be Area 3 and Area 5. The Maiden in Area 1 always shows up in colored portrait mode and just gives you a message. Basically saying, hey, keep an eye out for my friends. Now, for a long time, people were kind of mystified as to how to get the uh, colored portraits of the Maidens. It wasn't uh, left clear at all. There was actually a couple of sources uh, that revealed this. The first was a Japanese text website called Famicom All, eventually uh, translated, and the uh, results of which were uh, left on a website called The Cutting Room Floor. For those who are not familiar with The Cutting Room Floor, it's a great resource if you ever want to see regional differences between things. Um, in the case of games, it will talk about regional differences between Japan, North America, and Europe. So, according to um, the cutting room floor, here are the requirements for the maidens. I'm just going to say them here to save myself some annotation later. Um, area 1, as I mentioned, the maiden will always appear. For Area 2, um, the maiden will appear in the color portrait, if, the, uh, if your firepower is below three. So basically all you need to do is take a hit before the end of the level and you'll get the color portrait of the Fire Maiden and your energy restored. The Maiden in Area 3 apparently appears at random. It's a 50-50 coin flip uh, and gives you a one-up if you get the color portrait. I've found I have a little bit better luck if I don't finish the level at full strength which means not having three heads, not having three firepower, and having taken a little bit of damage. But again, it's a crapshoot. The main in Area 4 will appear if your dragon has less than three heads. And with the appearance of the color portrait, you get energy restored. So if you want to see the shadowed portrait, all you have to do is have uh, three noggins amongst you. In Area 5, uh, it's once again a 50-50 shot at getting the color portrait or the shadowed portrait of the Maiden, and once again the color portrait version will give you a 1-up. Finally, in Area 6, um, you need to once again have less than three heads in order to get the color portrait of the Maiden, and you'll get your energy restored. Now, there's one other significance to this. The Maidens actually have different speech text depending on whether or not the color portrait or the shadowed portrait shows up. Now, this really doesn't affect the rest of the game at all, other than to fill in some, uh, some story and lore for you, but it's uh, interesting enough to see. So from here, what I'm going to show are the portraits of the maidens, um, both in um, their colored version and the shadowed version. I will show the color one first and the shadow one second. And as I mentioned before, area one is always the color portrait. So that finally solves the uh, maiden mystery. By the way, um, as I mentioned, uh, this is only part of the blue dragon route. Um, if you're in the gold dragon route, um, the maidens who will appear are only going to appear in their color portrait mode, and that only applies to the ones in areas three and four. One final thing about this, um, whether you get 
all of the colored portraits or all of the shadowed portraits or a mix and match, it does not affect the ending of the game whatsoever. So um, if you're trying to get all the color portraits, uh, definitely helps you live longer and it may make for a more interesting story overall, but it ends the same way.
on the agenda is the Famicom version of Dragon Spirit, uh, known as Dragon Spirit Aratanaru Densetsu. And interestingly enough, um, this translates as Dragon Spirit New Legend, appropriate because the North American full title is Dragon Spirit The New Legend. Um, that is not the only thing that is remarkably similar about the two titles, because in a uh, bucking of tradition, the Japanese uh, version of this is very much the same as the American version. Um, there isn't a massive uh, difficulty curve that you would normally expect with a uh, Japanese title uh, being translated to North America. And the story uh, seems to be basically the same. Um, I hadn't been able to detect any like enemies being changed or anything like that. I played all the way through the uh, Famicom version. Um, there's only uh, three differences that I can see. And uh, again, I also... Um, learned of these through the cutting room floor, so I wanted to actually get some footage of it. Um, the only three things they changed, uh, number one on the uh, title screen, uh, instead of Namco, it says Namcot, which is the Japanese name for Namco. Um, that's uh, the name they've traded in, in under in Japan for years and years. Um, obviously all the text is in Japanese. And the only other things that I happen to notice... Now, um, there are a couple of changes graphically in the uh, two different modes. Um, in the Gold Dragon mode, um, there is a, a difference in the uh, Dream Cut scene. Um, one, um, the boy in the U.S. Uh, has a uh, pajama shirt on in Japan he doesn't and the um, statue or a uh, toy rather of a uh, Zawal on his uh, bedpost is uh, red instead of blue in the US so it looks almost like he has a toy shrimp uh, on his headboard <laughs> The second thing is a uh, Easter egg involving the ending of the Blue Dragon uh, um, mode. So I'm just going to uh, let you see it and um, you know view this for yourself. To get that, um, when the uh, portrait comes up for the ending, all you have to do is press select 20 times. And you'll be able to tell when I pressed uh, select for the 20th time. And uh, I'll uh, let you draw your own conclusions. Now, the interesting thing about this, um, the, uh, the code um, was uh, removed in the U.S. translation of the game. But um, inside the ROM of the actual uh, game, uh, the graphics for it are still there. So all they did was basically um, seal off the front door. The house was left standing. From here on out, I really don't have any footage to show, so it'll just be my lovely voice. I do apologize for that. But um, the next thing is about the sequel to Dragon Spirit, known as Dragon Saber. 
This was released in Jap Japanese arcades in 1990 and in North American arcades in 1991. It actually did very well in Japan. Uh, in fact, it was um, called the most popular game of the year by at least one gaming magazine. Unfortunately, it did not see much in the way of ports. Uh, it only was ported to the uh, PC Engine in Japan, what we know in the, Nor in the uh, United States and Europe as the TurboGrafx-16. However, it did show up on a couple of compilations. The first was called the Namco Museum Encore. That was released in PlayStation 1 in 1997, but again, alas, Japanese only. It was also made for the Virtual Console, the Nintendo Wii, and two versions of it showed up. The PC Engine port showed up in 2008. I believe it was around the same time that a lot of the Turbo Graphics uh, games were appearing on the Virtual Console, and the arcade version showed up a year later in 2009, but once again, in Japan only. It would take until 2022 for a home playable version of Dragon Saber, the arcade version, to finally come to North America. It was handled by a group called, I kid you not, Hamster Corporation, famous for a series called Arcade Archives, which uh, takes classic arcade games from all kinds of different publishers and creates home versions of them. Um, in 2022, um, Dragon Saber came to the PS4 and the Switch. So there is a way to actually play this if you have one of those consoles. As far as the arcade version goes, I'm assuming it is available on MAME, but I did not have a chance to check that. If you do want to see a playthrough of it, um, there is a YouTube site called World of Long Plays that has done an arcade playthrough of it. I'll give a link to that in the description. Finally, Dragon Spirit would rear its scaly head in one other very strange way. In 2012, Bandai Namco launched a website with the intent of trying to restore some of their old properties to visibility and perhaps being able to get some more games out of them. This website was called Shifty Look. Very odd name, but hey, you know, you should be used to that if you've been on the internet for more than seven seconds. Among the titles that were included in Namco's old properties on Shifty Look were Rolling Thunder, Xevious, Mappy, Wonder Momo, and Bravo Man, among many others. Pr primarily, this consisted of comic adventures featuring characters from the universe uh, and also characters added to the universe to flesh it out. On top of that, there were also several cartoons on a YouTube site for Shifty Look. The cartoons consisted of Mappy, Bravo Man, and Wonder Momo. If you're wondering about the reappearance of Bravo Man and Wonder Momo, the site was launched with definite hopes for those two characters to be able to have some more games come out and it sort of worked. Bravo Man had a mobile game for a while, and Wonder Momo actually received two mobile games. One, I believe, was just self-titled Wonder Momo. I could not confirm that. And the second was called Wonder Momo Typhoon Booster. The, um, the second of these games was actually produced by Way Forward, who I know very well as the developers of Contra 4 on the DS. If you've never played that, by all means, if you're a Contra fan, you owe it to yourself to do so. Eventually, I want to. Now, unfortunately, Shifty Look did not stick around long. It was unceremoniously shut down in 2014, and the YouTube channel did not last all that much longer. It was shut down in 2016. One thing, actually, I should mention also, in addition to the comics and the games that were available there, there was a visual novel called Namco High. I was not able to find out a whole lot of information about that. I can only assume it was Namco characters in high school, sort of uh, saved by the bell, but it needed quarters. 
As far as how things are available now, there are actually a few archives online that have the comics, and in some cases, some of the animation, and even the games, I believe. I know that um, Namco High did get a reboot. I'll include some links, actually, if you're interested in um, looking at the comics or the uh, cartoons. The uh, cartoons for Mappy and Bravo Man have been preserved on a YouTube channel called Shifty Look Forever, established in 2016, and as of the night I record this, October 7th, 2023, still running. There are also some books that are available, if you look hard enough, that have collections of some of the comics from Katamari, Bravo Man, and Wonder Momo. Unfortunately, um, while there was the animated toon series for uh, Wonder Momo, that seems to have disappeared completely by the wayside. By the way, when I mentioned Wonder Momo was one of their biggest projects, I'm not kidding. I'm going to provide a link to their uh, Twitter slash uh, X page, and Wonder Momo is featured right in the, uh, the top uh, bar. Uh, right, right when you see the page, that's the first thing you see. Uh, what you won't see, however, is any post after 2014. Shifty Look, unfortunately, had a short shelf life, but because of that, we did get a Dragon Spirit comic. And I happen to have read that, and it's interesting. Um, the main thing I noticed about it, um, it has interplay between two main characters, a male and a female, which uh, may be a nod to the two-player in uh, Dragon Saber. Uh, like I mentioned, there will be a ton of links um, down below this video in the description if you'd like to uh, go gather those for yourself. With that, I think I have finally run out of things to say and talk about and reveal regarding Dragon Spirit the New Legend. Uh, it's a fun game. It's definitely one of my old favorites, but uh, you'll understand if I uh, want to leave it aside for a while after this. Um, I might possibly play Dragon Saber sometime down the line. We'll have to see. I actually have to give it a try because until I did some research for this game, I didn't even know it existed. So that was as much a surprise to me as it is to you. Anyway, uh, I want to thank you very much for um, following me along in this uh, journey, whether you happen to be uh, blue or gold, whatever route you took. We got to uh, some interesting conclusions, didn't we? So uh, take care, and always remember, follow your spirit until we game again. This episode's Giving Shifty Looks to Maidens was made possible by Mike Panza, Rick in Baltimore, D.I.O.D., Jumpy Cat, Shin Majin, the post-production contributions of Matthew Carr Anderson, and all my I wasn't furiously pressing select Lycanthro fans. Thank you very much for your continued support. Until we game again.